Welcome back to Football Daily. Today, we're looking at 10 of the biggest rivalries, disputes and beefs in football right now. Strap yourselves in. 10. Lampard v Klopp There's no doubt that in footballing terms, Jurgen Klopp's biggest rival is Pep Guardiola, with the two visionary coaches enjoying a fiercely competitive but mutually respectful battle over the years. However, his encounters with Chelsea boss Frank Lampard have not been so amicable. Tensions first flared up in Liverpool's 5-3 victory over Chelsea in July 2020. Following a debatable free kick decision, Lampard lost his call at Reds assistant Pepin Linders, with footage later showing the manager repeatedly swearing at Klopp and his staff. Klopp told him to calm down and Lampard made the now infamous statement, only league title you've ever won and you're giving it the big un, forgetting the German coach's two Bundesliga crowns as well as his pedigree in European competition. The Chelsea manager carried on the hostilities post-match, branding the Liverpool bench as arrogant and claiming they had broken an unwritten code. Klopp simply responded by saying that the young coach had much to learn and weeks later took an indirect swipe at Chelsea over their frivolous transfer activity, saying Liverpool take a different approach to clubs owned by oligarchs. Comments that Lampard then labelled slightly amusing. Something's telling us this feud isn't over just yet. 9. Solskjaer v Mourinho Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Jose Mourinho's relationship as managerial rivals following the Portuguese's appointment by Tottenham in 2019 began in good faith. But since the summer of 2020, the rivalry has threatened to become a bit more heated. First, a report in The Athletic suggested that Mourinho thought Solskjaer was out of his depth at his former club. Then, after their one-all draw in June, the Spurs coach noted United's favourable penalty record, something he would continue to joke about in the media later in the summer. At the beginning of the new season, Oli took a swipe back, joking about Mourinho measuring the goalposts after a Europa League game, with the Spurs manager replying with another jibe about Solskjaer's reliance on penalties to win games. The United manager then had another go, this time about Spurs' easy entry into the Carabao Cup fourth round following the cancellation of their tie with Leighton Orient. But ahead of a clash between the two sides the following week, Solskjaer dampened the beef, saying he wasn't into mind games and that he respected Mourinho, passing his comments off as a bit of fun to give journalists something to write about. But it was too late. Mourinho got the last laugh as Spurs smashed United 6-1 at Old Trafford, handing them their heaviest defeat in nearly a decade. Before we move on to our next rivalry, just a quick reminder to subscribe to Football Daily and hit that notification bell so you never miss another great video. If you're not part of the club already, what are you doing? We put videos like this out every single day. You really don't want to miss out, trust me. 8. Leon v Ligue the global pandemic of 2020 has been a disaster for football clubs up and down the leagues across the world, and one man who took particular issue with the way the crisis was handled in France was Lyon president Jean-Michel Ola. In April, the 2019-20 Ligue 1 season was cancelled with 10 fixtures remaining, with the final league placement settled on a points-per-game basis. This left Lyon in 7th, their lowest placing in over 20 years, and sensing the injustice of missing out on European football, Ola immediately set about appealing the decision. However, along with relegated Amiens and Toulouse, Lyon's case was rejected, and unsurprisingly, this only saw their fiery owner become even more public in his criticism of the French football authorities. In July, with the rest of the top five leagues back in action, he blamed a lack of leadership for Ligue 1's failure to restart, and by September, French paper Les Parisiennes had reported that he was after nearly 120 million euros in compensation from the league. Whatever happens, after their entertaining run to the Champions League semi-finals, let's hope to see them back in Europe in 2021. 7. Salah v Mane We're breaking up this video with a particularly friendly rivalry. Don't worry, it's going to get ugly again after this. Mohamed Salah and Sadio Mane are of course good mates, but with the pair often posting a similar goal output, they are consequently battling each other for personal accolades. And in August 2019, their relationship hit a hurdle of sorts, after Salah decided to take a difficult shot on himself instead of playing in Mane, who was in a far better position in a league game against Burnley. The Senegalese forward was visibly furious with his teammate after being subbed off, but the pair quickly settled their differences, going on to fire Liverpool to their first Premier League title. However, that hasn't stopped them being pitted against each other in the wild west of football Twitter. For well over two years, fans have gone to battle over who is better, with Team Mane constantly bringing up his work rate and Team Salah relying more on his superior attacking numbers. Ultimately, it's a pretty pointless debate, but one which somehow continues to endure. 6. West Ham fans v GSB 
The feud between West Ham fans and the club's owners, David Sullivan and Gold, is nothing new, and even with supporters unable to voice their dissent in the stands, their relationship is as fractious as ever. Having been promised a brighter future featuring world-class players in European football on leaving Upton Park for the London Stadium in 2016, many Hammers fans have felt cheated in the four years since trading in their spiritual home for almost no reward in terms of silverware or entertainment and frequent flirtations with relegation. In 2019, they set up Hammers United, a group dedicated to conducting constructive dialogue with the club hierarchy, and by 2020, it had amassed over 12,000 members. However, with the ownership seemingly refusing to engage, members changed their tune, calling for Gold Sullivan and Vice Chairman Karen Brady to leave the club in protest, and accusations that the club had asked for a reduced away allocation for their trip to Liverpool as a result of the growing dissent were soon rife. By the beginning of the 2020-21 campaign, Captain Mark Noble was even questioning the club, following the controversial sale of Grady Diangana to West Brom, and even even after impressive wins over Wolves and Leicester, Hammers United continued to protest. It's hard to see an end to this dispute anytime soon. 5. Man United v Mino Raiola Man United's relationship with super agent Mino Raiola has been one fraught with disagreement. A man who Sir Alex Ferguson claims he never trusted, Raiola has made a success of securing the very best deals for himself and his clients, getting the last laugh over Fergie when he bagged around £40 million from the sale of Pogba back to United in 2016. Having orchestrated his departure from Old Trafford for peanuts four years earlier. And in 2020, relations between the club and agent almost reached breaking point. With Pogba growing increasingly unhappy at United, and with Real Madrid growing increasingly interested, Raola branded United a club out of touch with reality and without a sporting project. Going on to state, I wouldn't take anyone there, they would even ruin Maradona, Pele and Maldini. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, clearly angered by this, later stated, Pogba is our player and not Mino's. The agent responded on Twitter, saying he hoped Solskjaer wasn't suggesting the player was his prisoner in what seemed like the final straw at the time. If reports are to be believed, had the global pandemic not struck weeks later, Pogba would be a Real Madrid player by now. As it stands, United and Raiola must continue to endure an uneasy association. 4. Giroud v Benzema Thanks to Dan Anjay for suggesting this one on Twitter. Olivier Giroud initially encountered hostility from French football fans when he took the place of Karim Benzema in the national team in 2016, after the Real Madrid striker was indefinitely suspended following a sex tape scandal. Some believed Benzema's ostracisation from the squad to be unjust, and somehow Giroud, who had nothing to do with the scandal and had no say in squad selection, was made the target of abuse. And Benzema had no problems with taking some swipes of his own, liking a photo on social media which compared his wealth of silverware with Giroud's lack of trophies in 2017, and taking aim at his lack of pace in interviews, comparing himself to a Formula One car and the Chelsea man to a go-kart on Instagram in 2020. And while he may have meant nothing malicious in his comments over the years, the narrative that built around the pair has had a profound effect. In an interview with French media, Giroud revealed that he decided against a proposed move to Lyon in January 2020, over fears joining the club that birthed Benzema would cause too much controversy, and that he didn't want to risk even the slightest danger to his family. 3. Man City v UEFA Ever since Man City's takeover by the Abu Dhabi United group in 2008 and UEFA's introduction of financial fair play three years later, the club and organisation have rarely seen eye to eye. Not only have FFP regulations posed a threat to City's growth as a footballing empire, but fans have also taken issue with the governing body's punishment system, which dictated Porto a €20,000 fine for the racial abuse of Mario Balotelli by their fans in February 2012, while the following month the citizens were handed a €30,000 penalty for coming out after half-time a minute late. But when it came to UEFA's efforts to crack down on the club's big spending, it was City that ultimately won. They were fined nearly £50 million in 2014, but never had to forfeit a place in the Champions League, until a new investigation in 2018 prompted the club to be issued with a two-year ban from European football in February 2020, something which chief exec Ferran Soriano described as less about justice and more about politics. But while the reports and leaked documents which led to the ban suggested the club had deliberately misled UEFA in regards to their sponsorship revenue, the Court of Arbitration for Sport overturned it, 
ruling that the case relied on insufficient evidence. 2. Messi v Bartomeu On top of everything which has made him deeply unpopular with the Barcelona fanbase and membership, Josep Bartomeu will forever be remembered as the president who nearly lost Lionel Messi. And after deciding to stay at the camp now, the Blaugrana captain only made his resentments towards Bartomeu more public, sitting down for an interview in which he criticised the club for lacking a project and accused the president for not sticking to his word in regards to the player deciding his future at the end of each season. Furthermore, when Luis Suarez was allowed to leave the club for free and with little in the way of a farewell, Messi stuck the knife in some more, stating on Instagram, you deserved a sending off fit for one of the most important players in club history, not the one they gave you. But at this point, nothing surprises me. And while he declared a big victory in keeping the talismanic Argentinian at the club, the fiasco of summer 2020 could prove the final straw for Bartomeu. At the time of writing, he is set to face a vote of no confidence in early November after 16,000 fans signed a motion against him. 1. Valencia fans v Peter Lim Peter Lim's ownership of Valencia has been controversial to say the least. From hiring Gary Neville as manager in 2015 to sacking the popular Marcel in 2019, it's fair to say the Singaporean businessman has made some baffling decisions at the Mestalla, and his handling of the transfer window in 2020 only soured his relationship with the club's fans further. The atmosphere around the club was already toxic, with President Anil Murthy apparently receiving death threats from supporters the previous year, and in July, Lim's daughter took to social media to proclaim, the club is ours and we can do anything we want with it and no one can say anything in a post which was later deleted. By the middle of August, the club's brightest young star in Ferran Torres had been sold to Man City for a fraction of his market value, while club captain and talisman Danny Parejo was let go for free to Villarreal. This sparked protests from the club's hardcore fan base, and new manager Javi Gracia now has the thankless task of improving results on the field with a much weaker squad, having been given no new signings to replace the key players who were sold and even he reportedly wants to leave. So those were our 10 biggest rivalries in football right now, but what did you make of it? Do you have any suggestions of your own? Let us know in the comments below and maybe we'll do a part two. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave it a like and why not stick around by clicking on the video on screen right now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later.